Today, we will be playing Lady Jessica in the Stone Burner Open. This is the semi finals. We're playing in first position. Now, let's look at the row. So, first of all, we've got Desert Power. If you send an agent to a maker board space, get two spice. This is good for worms as well. Southern Elders is a good Bene Gesserit and Fremen's card. And Thumper. Thumper is has good reveal, one spice. Allows you to double the bonus spice. Smuggler's Haven, four spice for a point, could be relevant. Also has spacing access, very good. So Unswerving Loyalty, you know, Fremen Bond, if you get it, pretty good. Otherwise, could be mid. Let's play some Dune anyways. So we're sitting here in first position, playing against Badger with Muadib, against Bro JJ with Gurney, and Burn him Down with Fade. We start off with a rough hand, go to Spice Refinery. Uh, sorry, go to Contract and pick up the Spice Refinery contract. Uh, no faction access, unfortunate, but I think we should be able to go to Imperial Basin with our ring and pick up an Intrigue. And since we have two daggers, we can probably put one troop in and get value out of it. We get a memory, and we pick up detonation. Could be relevant, actually. In the early combats, we could just go to gather support, and then put in, uh, and then deploy it with detonation. And that could catch people off guard, especially early in the game, when people don't have many troops. Spice, refined from, spice refinery from Gurney, and he's probably going to try to win this combat. It does also match for him. We have a spectator joining us, Kasparov, 1991. I am recording this game, and CJ is also recording this game. I'm doing it from my perspective as Lady Jessica, while CJ has a black view. Anyways, let's continue with the game. It's Fade's turn. Fade decides. Fade's first action was Assembly Hall, so I probably see an early reveal as we see it. Picks up a Smuggler's Haven. Is probably going to push for more spice into converting the, for that for four spice for a point. We just have three persuasion. Pick up Thumper. You know, one spice on reveal could be relevant. Um, and, you know, some yellow access. We could probably get um, maybe some bonus spice off of it. Who knows? And Bro JJ Gurney picks up Desert Power as his first card. Ooh. He's also going to be first to Worms because he's just won this combat. And nobody can stop him. This combat is also a Worm combat. So if. If the whole table decides not to stop Gurney from going Haka Basin, he will have Worms in and probably pick up this win. If obviously he has the right um, daggers and stuff. And then Gurney decides to go Siege Tauber as we expected and is probably going to get Worms in if Fade, me, or Muadib decides not to block. And since I have both of my Diplos in my hand, I did not think I'm going to be blocking because playing my Faction Axis is so important to me. Ugh. And Fade decides not to block. I obviously cannot block because I have both of my Diplos in my hand. I go Desert Tactics, you know, end up trashing a Dune. Um, we're not really looking at any high Persuasion cards as of right now. Um, you know, if Truth Trance comes around to us or maybe Guild Envoy comes around to us, we can probably pick it up. But I doubt it's going to be. Um, anyways, Badger decides to not uh, block Mod, uh, Gurney as well. So Gurney gets Worms in. Ugh. We do have Detonation here. So it's a choice between us whether we want to get third uh, or second. And I think maybe second might be a better choice. Because for Solari, oh, we go Secrets and we pick up Spring the Trap quite the intrigue especially as jessica when we get um when we once we go to espionage and you know get some spies down this is going to be very good for us we pick up reliable informant oh no what is it called i believe real reliable informant yep we pick up the reliable informant spacing guild access spies on um the other faction spaces if we get it now i'll make a hard decision here um i decide to play my uh detonation because I figure that playing for 4 Solari is better than playing for 3 Solari. Because then 4 Solari puts me up at the mark to just go Spice Refinery. 
and get two slurry and have six uh, slurry for swordmaster if i see another uh player get swordmaster before me then um anyways next round we have the Bene Gesserit combat not one of the favorites but obviously if gurney can get worms in he's not gonna deny it Yep, I go Spice Refinery. Um, since I'm playing my ring, yep, wow, we pick up another combat intrigue, Find Weakness. We have all of the Spice intrigues. Since we go to Spice Refinery, we complete the contract and draw two cards. I decided to put the one troop in because I figured that if Gurney decides not to deploy as many troops in, we could probably take him over with Find Weakness. Um, as long as we know, we get Deliver Supplies and put a spy on like Espionage or Emperor. Um, yep. This is just going to be a determination of how many troops does everybody else put in. Badger decides to go esp uh, maybe deliver supplies? No, but he chooses to go espionage instead. Okay, good for us. Gurney's just going to put in worms because he's Gurney. Oh, actually, he decides to go... Hmm, he decides to go siege tower. Interesting. Okay. Oh, right, because he has desert power, so he's automatically getting worms in. That's right. Hmm, okay. Ooh. What does Fade Rather do, do here? Okay, Fade goes to Imperial Basin, puts in two troops. We accidentally almost revealed our um, Spring the Trap. Would have been unfortunate because then everybody would count account for me having Spring the Trap. Anyways, we get Deliver Supplies and we put a Spy on Espionage. So now Find Weakness is active for us. And based on this combat, we also, we also do have two daggers by the way. So our max combat strength here is nine. And, I mean, I guess maybe Badger could go Research Station if he wants to. He goes to, he decides to go um, Desert Tactics. He's probably going to deploy both of them because, well, I mean, he doesn't know we have Intrigues, right? Um, the good thing is nobody has any Intrigues. So this means that everybody's max combat strength is going to be at their real turn. Steersman shows up. Okay. Next round, we're actually guaranteed to draw our diplomacy. So we could, you know, in theory, get Steersman next round. Okay. Um, hmm. What does Fade do? Does Fade full of spy here? Okay. Badger is going to start table talking. Yep. Classic Badger. Saying it's good for us all if he stops the guy in first. Yep. Garney is way ahead, by the way. He's sitting on four points while the rest of us are on like zero, one, or two. Um, Fade decides to succumb to the table talk and decides to recall the spy. We simply prepare the prick of the way, prepare the way, because I realize that if I'm gonna win this combat, prepare the way is are pretty much active for me now because i already have one bump in uh bandage Esrit, and after this combat i'm gonna have another bump and uh we deny gurney second place as well so now gurney and um fade both tie for third leaving badger with nothing we pick up desert mouse the the intrigue that allows us to match um if we have a free lying mouse combat and for us we do um, so now we've just picked up another free point. So now we don't have to ever try out for another mouse combat. Um, okay. Yep, we end up going to espionage. We recall both of our memories. We flip. And now here comes Reverend Mother Jessica. Once during your turn, when you have sent an agent to a uh, Benjusword or Fremen space, you may double the rewards for spending a single water. And her ring ability just allows her to convert one spice into one water. That one water is good because of her passive that she can double rewards at Benjusword and Fremen. I decide to double my rewards instantly and, you know, pay for one more uh, water to get another sp another spy and another card. I put the spy on Fremen and the other spy on Bene Gesserit. Um, unfortunately, we don't draw our, dip uh, our reliable informant. Otherwise, we would have probably gone to uh, deliver supplies and, you know, pick put down a spy. Um, but, okay, well, we have nine persuasion, so... We also have the case that somebody early reveals in front of us, so we could also also get a spice of slow. Badger asks me if I'm gonna be early revealing, signaling maybe he has eight, or he could just be baiting me into early revealing. But I don't actually have a better turn. My other turn could possibly be getting an intrigue at assembly hall, 
or go and gather support. Um, I have started to realize that Thumper's one spice on reveal has been very beneficial for me. That one spice has been take letting me get trips to espionage and has been pretty good overall. We're running a, I believe, 11 card deck or 12 card deck actually. And in these 12 cards, one of them is Steersman. So this is gonna be a pretty good game for us. Let's see if Badger actually had eight. Yep. I did I did ask him. Um, all this commentary that I do, by the way, is post-game commentary. Because it is kind of um, rough for me to commentate and think at the same time. Gurney decides to play his Seek Allies to Highlander and deploys in all of the troops. Not sure why he's done this. Probably just to get ahead of Badger, maybe? Hmm. I still continue asking Badger if he had 8 or not because I wanted to feel good about myself. Just to know that I've, you know, blocked him. Badger obviously reveals no information. He did not have 8, so we did end up getting baited, which is unfortunate. But it's fine, we would end up either getting an Intrigue or two more troops. Could be relevant later in the game, but not for now. Gurney takes the combat down, gets the match, gets the Imperial Basin, and we instantly draw our Steersman and our Reliable Informant. This is kind of unfortunate because we probably want to be playing both of those cards to Spacing Guild, but since we've drawn both of them in the same hand, we are not going to be able to do that. So this might be, this is a difficult question for us. We're obviously going to be, going to be getting our Swordmaster this turn, so the other question is do we play our Reliable Informant to Spacing Guild, or do we play our... Um, Steersman to Spacing Guild and, you know, play whatever other card we get from the draw. Badger continues to table talk because he believes that we are in the lead, which I did not believe so myself. Fade has a little bit of a think um, and does not succumb to Badger's peer pressure this time. Ends up going espionage. So now we do get the ability to go... Um, deliver supplies if we choose to which we most likely will but first we get our swordmaster yep get the swordmaster now we have another action for the rest of the game badger puts in two worms okay now currently decides that he's also going to put into uh, put in a worm himself Decides to just commit one? Okay, decides to commit his whole garrison. Badger continues to table talk, telling him that he has two daggers in his hand, but he cannot um, show those two daggers yet. Gurney decides to still put all four troops in. If Badger has two daggers, Badger has two daggers. Otherwise, Gurney will take the combat down, since none of them have any intrigues. Fade Ratha just goes to con Contract and picks up the Spice Refinery for Water Contract. Now here we could either play our Steersman to deliver supplies or probably play our Steersman to Eric Heen or Imperial Basin actually. The question is do we want an Intrigue and a Troop for getting third in the combat or do we want two Spice? Badger obviously starts uh, doing his little talks. Um, but it's fine. It's fine. I've played with Badger before. Okay. Um, yeah, we decided to simply just go to, uh, to get two spice at Imperial Basin because, um, I, I don't think one intrigue is, you know, as good as two spice because Lady Jessica, I mean, Jessica, Reverend Mother Jessica really runs on the fact that she has spice. So... Spice is used for espionage, spice is used for shipping. There's so many uses for spice compared to um, like an intrigue. I mean, obviously, you know, if I end up pulling like another good intrigue, I'm not gonna say no to it, but there's still um, a little chance. But anyways, Badger has two swords and Bro JJ and Badger both tie the combat. This is very good for us because now we basically get the spacing alliance for free and nobody can stop us. Things have been 
going in, um, favorably for us so far. This turn is a blue combat. Okay. And there is a wall up, so no worms. So people might actually not decide to commit that heavy into this combat. That's good for us, actually. Why? Well, because now we can just play our Spring the Trap and, you know, get this combat done with. You know, get our match and just say that, hey, look, we're not going to end up playing for combat 7s or 8s because well first of all we don't have the facilities to especially because we don't have hooks yet we don't even have two on the fremen yet so hooks are far off from us and i assume the wall is gonna be broken because gurney has desert power so it's just a matter of when not a matter of if fade route that gets hooks um gets another water decides to put her spy on arakeen then we, um, I simply just play my, uh, Dune the Desert Planet to shipping and get my bump in, uh, Fremen. Because I don't see myself going to Fremen, I just have the spy there simply to block anybody else from getting a spy. Also, I mean, I have spies down in the faction spaces, um, because of Spring the Trap. I need to put spies down regardless. And the thing with uh, Fremen is that Fremkid, I could end up double drawing on Fremkid, which is pretty useful for spice with slow purposes. Okay. Long the fighters played from Badger. He ends up taking these Fremen Alliance. Okay. Interesting because Shashakli is in Gurney's hand. So Gurney might challenge Badger for the Fremen Alliance. That's really good for us because now that's one more person that's not looking at our alliances. We pick up two intrigues at Secrets because we get the alliance. We pick up Contingency Plan and Cunning. Pretty good intrigues. Um, we have four intrigues in our hand, but we are not to worry because there is no spy on Secrets. So nobody can steal from us. There is some combinations of intrigues that end up putting a spy on secrets and then you can go, but that's, I mean, if they have them, fair enough, right? High Council for Bene Gesserit, um, pull, pull, um shows up on the row for contracts. But anyways, okay. So the combat is really interesting because nobody has deployed many troops in this combat. And we're last to act because we're the ones at Swordmaster. So, yep, only three troops from Gurney. No Highlander from Gurney. Just three troops in. He figures that he's probably going to win this combat. Um, probably with maybe like a dagger in his hand. And possibly maybe an intrigue. Um, and you know, it's a good match for him. So this is another point for him. Currently, we are leading. But we are probably... We're bound to slow down very fast. We go Eric Keen, Put the troop in. Because obviously, you know, we want to win this combat. Badger ends up having a spice slow. Because Southern Elders provides Fremen Bond to Persuasion for him because of unswerving loyalty he also gets a water i don't know why badger is sitting on five water no need for that much water i mean maybe research station and worms but sure anyways we reveal for two daggers and a spice this spice has been very useful for us actually because this spice has allowed us to go espionage the spice has just you know been very versatile for us overall we end up picking up another another prepare the way for you know spice a slow generation um okay and it is our turn and we play our spring the trap we end up recalling two of our spies and we also have um contingency plan in case you know uh green decides to play an intrigue and they all pass and we take the combat down this uh, this is ma this matches for us badger explaining his little intuition there um okay now we do have the spacing alliance so as long as as long as green and yellow does not go to deliver supplies we get the spacing alliance get pretty much guaranteed and as long as um what's the machinations combat it's called oh um propaganda as long as propaganda does not show up on the next round if it lasts the next round which i think it most likely will because i cannot end the game But anyways, um, as I was saying, uh, we just take the alliance down and nobody really can take it away from us. For the most part. Obviously, there's change allegiances and those intrigues, but no need to worry about those for now. Keep in mind that we also have one point from our endgame because we have the yellow match. So that's going to be pretty beneficial for us in, um, you know, like when we're pushing like round seven, round eight. Or at least when we're pushing endgame, I guess. Okay. 
unfortunate for us that um, Gurney takes high council because we really wanted to go high council this turn. Um, but it's okay, you know, we can probably still get a spice slow. We are sitting on two, four, five, six persuasion. We end up playing cunning, getting rid of a dagger, and just drawing a card. We'll see what we get. We get a Dune the Desert Planet. Not, hmm, not optimal, but it's okay. Um, okay. Badger already claiming the win. <laughs> I decided to go Eric Keen, draw two cards. Okay, we draw a dagger. Unfortunate for us, but it is what it is. We end up recalling our agent on Deliver Supplies. Since the wall is broken, Badger deploys in Worms, and he he is right. He is only going to be getting two troops, two, three points from this combat. Two points from um, the double points, I guess, on the combat, and one point for the match. Bro JJ actually just early reveals. Actually, not early reveals. He just reveals, I guess. You right? Or did he have an action? He had an action. He just, just chose not to play it. But he ends up revealing for nine persuasion. Although you may seem, you may think that it's eight persuasion. Gurney has six um, strength in the combat, therefore putting up to one more persuasion. It just does not show it on the persuasion uh, mat for some reason. So, if in case you were worrying how he got a spice was slow, wondering how he got a spice was slow, that's how he got it. Anyways, it's on Yellow's turn. Yellow decides. Yellow has the contract card by the way and has not completed a single contract i found that quite funny but <laughs> okay he's completed his first contract um he decides to spend four spice for a point on smuggler's haven we are guaranteed to get third in this combat which is pretty good for us we end up going to um contract accept contract just to you know pick up some persuasion and um or at least hope to pick up some persuasion and we actually did we actually got to prepare the way we're sitting on eight persuasion now so as long as badger decides not to go to assembly hall we're good here he has placed down a dagger so we are kind of worried here that he might either go assembly hall or gather support but since modib is a more combat heavy character i assume he's probably going to go to gather support i could be wrong if he goes if he goes assembly hall we are kind of screwed here or at least we're not going to get spice slow this turn um okay strike fleet taken from fade because there is no spice was slow there we luckily get um assembly hall we pick up distraction not a relevant combat uh not a relevant spy card for us but it's okay then um i forget to pass but then i do and i get third in this combat two spice and two solari we have 13 solari and unfortunately we don't have anything to use it on except for high council um yeah since we since we basically have drawn zero emperor access access this whole game we have not gotten a single bump on emperor which is um just kind of bit which is kind of rough because we really would like to go to like imperial privilege and you know trade out an intrigue um yeah this is what happens when you get access dead. We have some persuasion in our hand. We're playing well here. Um, we, I go to espionage. I double my rewards. Some basic Jessica stuff here. Um, yep. I miscounted my cards for a second. Um, I wasn't sure how many I was supposed to draw. So I asked everybody else. Yep. I started five cards. So then I played one diplomacy. That's um, And then I draw three cards from espionage. One from the spy, one from the space, and one from doubling rewards. So then I should have seven cards in my hand. And one played. Um, right. Okay. Um, there's three spice sitting on Imperial Basin. So that... Hmm. Three spice is good for tiebreakers. So ooh, we could we could get there. If, you know, if we get there, it would be very good for us. For tiebreaker purposes, obviously, because... The game might be ending? I'm not sure here. Um, well, little uh, spoiler alert, the game does end here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that, like I didn't know that, but. <laughs> Anyways, Badger continues to, you know, keep hammering the table to continue blocking me. Like, man, I'm not in the, I'm not in the position to win here. Or at least, I don't think I am. Anyways, I decided to go high council here, uh, end up recalling a spy just to get more persuasion. I'm trying to draw steersman here because steersman will allow me to get uh, more spice. 
and more spice obviously you know pushes me for highlander while i'm obviously when i was playing this game i did not think the game was gonna end uh well because you know yellow is sitting on like four points uh green is sitting on like six points uh and red is sitting on seven points and i didn't think red was gonna win this combat um i was thinking like i was thinking probably either yellow or green is gonna win this combat and i don't i didn't think they had the facilities to end this game but anyways you will see uh in the near future how how i was completely wrong <laughs> Anyways, we have Southern Elders from Badger. Ends up going to Secrets, picking up his um, his friendship point. We have a Imperial Privilege from Gurney. Decides to trash Leverage, probably the worst Intrigue in the game. We have Sardaukar Coordination from Fade Routha. Ends up putting all four troops in and ends up playing um, Distraction. This is good for her because that's uh, him. I forget that Fade is a guy. Anyways, Fade gets a spy, and that spy is gonna generate him two more strength because he can recall a spy for two uh, two swords. Anyways, um, I actually misplayed here because I should have realized the game is gonna be ending. So um, I should have just played my deliver uh, my prepare the way to Arakeen and drawn, and you know end up end up just drawing my pretty much my whole deck and hoping to um, draw Steersman so that I can get two spies on real, but. Obviously, I missed that because I just didn't think that anybody could end the game. And that might have costed me. But we do get a spice of slow, and we do have 10 points if the game does end here. Spoiler alert, it does. Badger is just simply just taking down his points. Um, with, you know, Badger spent three actions going to three different faction spaces just to get his, uh, points. He got one at spacing, one at, uh, dutiful, one, du one at dutiful service, and one at secrets. Hmm. Now, Gurney's got one action left. So, this, if Gurney thinks he can win this combat, he's probably just gonna Highliner, right? Um, and then if he has desert power, that's another worm in, right? And then how many can Gurney end up on? And Gurney ends up on one point for the match, two points if he puts a worm in. So that's three. He does not have six Solari. So he's on three persuasion. Uh, sorry, not three persuasion. Three points. Oh, he also gets one point from acquiring the Spacing Guild friendship. Um, yeah, Badgers continuously, you know, uh, Badger and both burn him down. Or probably trying to figure out what intrigues I've got. To their suspicion i actually have none of these intrigues the intrigues that they're talking about is opportunism and um i guess change allegiances i could probably have and end up end up ending the game because i will reveal two uh spice on reveal and then i can go down and bench desperate go up an emperor and then pay three points three spice for a bump in emperor and you know get a point there with that way the other intrigues i have i could have are probably you know just secure spice trade which is just if you have two or more spice with slows you know uh you get uh another point and two spice uh, but that's for end games yes okay gurney decides to just highlighter this combat and Izumi probably has desert power so that's gonna be a worm in um if yellow wins this combat though yellow will end up getting three points and that also ends the game okay so now at this point we figured out that it doesn't matter what's gonna happen the game is ending it's just a matter of who has the endgame intrigues or who has like the intrigues. Um, if yellow wins this combat, we're not worried because, well, yellow has no points, so no way of getting, um, yellow has no intrigue. So we know that they're going to be ending on 10 and we know that we have, we guaranteed have more spice than them. So we're going to be beating yellow. Now, green reveals and green ends up taking, um, ends up beating yellow in the combat. Badger thinks. Does Badger have that many combat intrigues? Hmm. Okay, and they all pass. Now it comes down to what intrigue does blue does green have? Because green is on 10. And oh Badger actually did have how many intrigues? Badger had plus seven swords. Anyways. But yeah, that was the end game. And this has been my recap so far. 
in the first game, uh, in my group stage, I played Jessica, got fourth. Second game, I also played Jessica and got fourth. Third game, I played Erlon and got first. Fourth game, I played Erlon and got first again. And then in the semis, we reached, um, uh, not semis, uh, in the quarterfinals, we played Lady Jessica. And we actually ended up winning the game uh, because, you know, nobody else can take us down. Now we're placed in the semis with Shea Guara, Alpha Nova, and Terra Shar. Shea Guara is actually one of the co-owners on this channel so that is gonna be my best friend that i'm gonna be playing against alpha nova a serious competitor because he was also at the north carolina invitational Terrashar, a pretty good player himself i'm gonna put up a tough fight 